Hello YouTube and uh, one more time welcome to my channel. Um, in this channel I'm trying to provide you tutorials on how to run EM simulations with Ansoft Maxwell and hopefully HFSS. Um, if you are not, if you are new with this uh, channel, uh, I'm trying to update every now and then, every week basically, um, any tutorials on Maxwell at the moment. Um, I'm trying to be more organized and uh, I made the first chapter uh, talking about the basics of the Ansoft Maxwell, how to work with that, how, what are the tools, how to do the very basic modeling. And in the second chapter, I'm working on uh, introducing you towards different uh, simulations and, typic and the types of the solution, uh, like the simulations. Um, at the moment, uh, I'm covering the electromagnetostatic um, simulator. So I'm going to, in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about uh, how to simulate a three-phase trans, uh, transformer. Um, you can, uh, this is one of the notes that I also got from the Ansoft um, uh, tutorial sessions that I attended there. And um, um, I'm going to share it with you in this uh, video and probably add some um, of mine, uh, you know, uh, experiences that I had with the answer to that. Um, so this uh, tutorial is going to be in the three different phases or three different um, videos that you can find in the in the channel. The very first video is going to talk about the problem this, and also uh, do some modeling and teach you how to do the modeling. The second video is going to talk about the boundary conditions and the excitations and also setting up the simulations. And the third video is going to be all about the results and inter how to show the results and how to inter uh, pair the results, uh, what that means and explain about that. So these are basically the organization of these three um, uh, videos uh, for this tutorial. Uh, I am trying to keep this organization for the next tutorials as well as uh, next examples. And so um, I hope that you uh, enjoy that. If you don't, please leave your comments and uh, let me know about my performance. So let's go it's ahead and uh, start the uh, uh, the very first uh, example. So what we are going to achieve is we are going to have a three-phase um, uh, transformer, as you can see here in this picture. And this transformer is going to be, um, as you see, a three-phase transformer with three coils. Uh, there are windings, uh, they are grouped to each other, uh, each of these three coils. And basically, we are going to uh, study the effect of these three coils together. So you can see that we have one uh, uh, E-shape e core and we have one I-shape core here. And in the in between of these two, we have our uh, gap. So this core comes with the core uh, with the gap core gap. And if you are not familiar with the transformers that much, you should know that when you are having a nonlinear uh, ferromagnetic material like this coil, which is a steel, um, when the current increases. Uh, it's not always meaning that the flux will increase inside and sometimes because it will hit the saturation the flux would not as, uh, increase inside and the effects that comes with the eddy current and other effects will translate the extra energy into heat and you can see that this fellow here catching fire so in order to somehow control that you can add a gap between uh, the E and the I core as you can see here, it's very small, and that gap will basically control the current and the flux, and therefore uh, it will it will make sure that the power would not uh, get wasted. Okay, so that basically is the what we are going to achieve. As you can see, um, these coils are actually uh, around the E-shape coil, so core. So this E-shape core is inside this core. So that's what we are going to achieve. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. Uh, what you can do is you just go ahead, as always, click on the 3D uh, module and uh, 
3D design and you have your plain 3D design ready in front of you. And there are a couple of options that it's not a bad idea to go for it. One is uh, you want to make sure that when you are creating some objects, um, you are going to uh, basically uh, have a, a visor um, popping up automatically when you make some box or anything. So you can automatically change the objects or the name uh, of that object uh, as soon as you created that. Um, also, you want to check the du duplicate boundaries mesh operation with the geometry, and in this, um, and uh, also the other options that might be interesting for you is um, you want to make sure that uh, what I'm looking at. Sorry. You also want to make sure that um, the polyline is automatically covered closed polylines. So it will cover the polylines that are close to each other and make a plane, a surface for that. So if you have like a closed polyline, like five lines, it will make a surface out of that five or four lines or three lines minimum, right? Um, that is also uh, that. And also when you are making any new uh, object, you want to give them a... Uh, a color by default the color is grayish so you can actually change the color to be something like this like a, like a nice blue and also you want to give the transparency of 85% or 80% so you can see the objects inside that um, there is nothing else that I want to uh, for you to check it so uh, let's go ahead and start our um, process so um, Oh, one last thing that you want to check is also uh, when you go to the uh, Maxwell 3D, you want to make sure that the solution type is a magnetostatic. That's the solution type that we are studying in this example. So make sure that it is on magnetostatic. Okay, now let's go ahead and start our first um, uh, part of the design, which is going to be the coil that we are going to have. So. Um, uh, the coil is actually the material of the coil is going to be a steel and it's a type uh, 1008 so uh, what you do is you go ahead in the material sections and just uh, search for the steel these are the steps that I've done before you can go ahead with more um, check it out before for, from the previous videos um, and because of that I'm gonna save some time and don't explain too much um, so now that we have the material selected as steel, I'm going to go click on the box and start drawing uh, the very first core. So uh, I'm pressing tab to uh, enter the values. Uh, oh, one more thing is uh, I want to make sure that my uh, units is in inch and uh, not the millimeters. Um, this is American, uh, North American basically system and uh, this example uses the inch so I'm gonna just do this and you can see that everything is now in inch uh, go back to the box and I start the values so the very first value is gonna be minus one inch um, then we have minus six for the Y value and then oh my bad sorry minus one for the X minus six for the Y and Oh, that didn't work out. Okay, X, Y, Z. So X is going to be minus 1. Uh, y is going to be minus 6. Z is going to be 0. Press Enter. Tab. 2. 12. And 10. Okay. So that is going to be our main coil. Um, so I'm going to call it the core. And also, uh, since we are here, we can change the color to whatever we like. Um, let's make it like a yellowish color and uh, press enter. And uh, to be able to fit everything, we can press control 
and D. Now it's the second, uh, we want to have two holes inside this core and basically make it to look like E. So to do that, we go ahead on the box again and we start putting the numbers for the X value minus 1. For the Y value, we have the value of 1. For uh, the Z value, we have the value of 2. Press Enter and press Tab. Uh, we have 2 inch for DX. We have 3 inches for the DY and 6 inch for DZ. Okay, now I'm going to press OK on that. I'm going to call this one hole, uh, meaning that it's going to go uh, and uh, basically make a hole inside the core that I have already. Okay. So I'm going to rotate the, the entire uh, model and make sure that the core is in the middle of the uh, hole. <coughs> and the hole is in the middle of the core. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the symmetric and um, I want to uh, basically change, duplicate the core. Um, so I'm going to select the core and use the duplicate uh, around axis. Um, button here and then I'm going to tell the uh, max hold that I want to duplicate it in a Z direction and 180 degrees and that will <coughs> give me the, uh, the the shape that I want as you can see here so we have the two core here so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these and uh, subtract them from the main core that I have so I can make my E shape uh, device. To do that, I'm going to select core, hole 1 and hole and use the subtract tools here and subtract these two to each other. So note that the tools are going to be the hole and hole underline 1 and when I press OK, what I will have is the very structure of the core. Now, uh, one thing that I'm going to do here is to create a gap. To do that, uh, I will use the, the same box and start putting the values. Uh, these values are basically uh, generated from the fact that I know um, I designed this thing before and I know what it's exactly the, the length and the, uh, the x and the dx and dy and dz is. So if you want to do it like uh, accurately, you should do that like this. You just create it on your piece of paper, start to uh, writing them some numbers, and then you can get uh, what are the numbers uh, that you have to put here. You can do it with the mouse and you don't have a very accurate numbers, uh, then you can basically have a feeling of the simulation results that you're looking for. Anyway, so, uh, so as I said, this number is going to be um, minus 1 for the x, for the y I have minus 6, for the z I have 2, press enter and then tap 2 for dx 12 for the dy and for dz we have the value of the gap which is at the moment 0 0.05 inch press ok and then change the name of box 1 to core gap ok now I'm gonna press uh, ok on that uh, one thing that you can do is you can make this gap to be uh, a variable. You can change the value of the gap later on. To do that, you just double click on the create box underneath the core gap and you have the attribute again. And over here for the uh, Z or DZ, uh, you can put a value of, for example, gap and press OK. And it will realize that gap is in, in terms of length and uh, it's in unit of inch. And you can put a value of 0 0.05 um, and then press OK. Again, press OK. And there we go, you got your gap. Now it's parametric and the variable called gap. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make another subtract. Uh, and this time I'm going to make the gap to be an actual gap. I want to create the E and I in my core. So to do that, I'm going to select the core and then I'm going to select the gap and then I'm going to use the subtract and, wanna, and then make sure that the tool part is the core gap and the blank part is the core and press OK. Now 
as you can see the gap is now uh, created between the two layers you see so now we have the gap between these two uh, E shape and I shape cores now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create two bodies instead of one body so I'm click on core and I go to the modeler and then I go to the boolean and over there I'm gonna say separate the bodies I wanna have two bodies one body is gonna be the E shape core uh, I can tell say core underline E and the other one is going to be the core that looks like I as you can see here and I'm going to use uh, here I'm going to change it to I there we go so now we have the two coils uh, the cores sorry ready here Okay, now let me go ahead and make the the cores, uh, the coils. I'm so sorry, the coils. Um, to do that, first we need to change the material into the copper. So to do that, we go select and then search for the copper and then press OK. Now um, to make the coil, uh, the coil, we want to have the coil to sweep around this uh, metal bar and then we will copy it three times and then we will copy the the, the windings which has three coils uh, two times so that's how we make it so basically we make the first coil then copy that to three coils and then make the, the three coils and copy them uh, two times so we'll have all the coils that we want that's uh, basically would be the latest part so right now I'm going to go ahead and make the very first coil here uh, with the rectangular that is going to be sweeping around this um, this device um, so let's go and make the rectangular and to do that uh, let's change the, the plane to Y and Z so now I'm in the Y Z uh, uh, plane and now I'm gonna make the very first uh, rectangular which is 2 uh, D object um, I'm gonna give the first dimensions for the the, the coordination point uh, X is 0 uh, Y is minus 3.6 and the Z is 3.5 I press enter and for the DX I will put 0 for DY I put 0.3 and for DZ I will put minus 0.8 inches pressing enter and uh, now we can call, call that rectangular to be coil to be coil um, a underline oops coil a underline one which represent this is the very first coil of the three coils of the winding a okay now I'm pressing OK and uh, now I want to make a sweep around this uh, first bar to do that I'm gonna go and make another rectangular first of all I'm gonna change my uh, plane to X and Y and uh, so the plane is the, 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 the blue and the green axis like we can see so now I'm gonna make another rectangular and in this rectangular I want to put 1.5 for the value of x I want to put it minus 6.5 for the value of y and 3 for the value of z and also for dx I have minus 3 inches uh, for dy I have 3 inch and for dz I have 0 okay pressing ok and, and I will get this uh, rectangular here as, then it's, as you can see because it's automatically covering the any enclosed polygon um, so it's covered with this uh, with this purple line and you can sh see that this is basically a, a plane it's not anymore a, a path so to make it a path you go and select that and uh, on the modeler you say delete the last operation the last operation here is cover lines so if you delete the last operation it would not cover the lines and therefore you will you will have only a path you will have only the lines that 
creates the rectangular, not the area. Now that we have that, <clears throat> I'm gonna go and select the rectangular and also the coil, uh, the it's coil A, and I'm going to go and make my swip. So I go to the draw and then to the swip, and then I'm gonna select sweep uh, along a path, which is the third option. When I do that, uh, I want to make sure that the angle of the twist is zero, the draft angle is zero, and the draft type is round. Then I press OK. So what we have here is the coil A underline one, and uh, now what we want to do is we want to have the terminals for this coil in order to be able to excite it. To do that, you select the, the coil, and then you go to the modeler, and then you go to the surface. And inside the surface, you go and select the section. In this section, we want to have the sections that are in um, Y, Z, and with the X, 0. So it will give us two sections of this coil. And I can get rid of one of the sections. Um, actually, I want to first make them separate. Uh, so I go for the boolean and then separate them from each other and then I will get rid of one of these fellows by pressing delete and now I have this section for my terminal and it's not a bad idea to call that the terminal um, a underline one terminal a underline one for the coil for the coil a underline one we have terminal a underline one so that's how we make the very first coil and from this point, we're just duplicating them and creating the rest um, seven, eight uh, other coil. Okay, now we want to duplicate the coils. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click uh, coil A underline one and press and hold the control key and also select terminal A underline A terminal A underline one. And uh, now that I selected both of them, I'm going to go and uh, select the duplicate along the line and over here I'm, I want to make sure that the duplicate is going to be uh, so the, the coordinate is 0 0 0 starting from the, uh, the, the, the midpoint and I would just want to uh, have this movement on the Z direction so the DX and DY is going to be 0 and for the DZ, I'm going to put 1.925, okay? So that's uh, the DZ accuracy. And then for the number of the duplication, I'm going to have uh, 3. So that it will actually give you a preview of what you will get at the end. And pressing OK to that. And probably I want to make the color to be a bit uh, sexier looking. So maybe green, which is a bit weird for... A coil but anyway so we have that and there we go we have our coil and it's all duplicated so what do you want to do with the rest uh, well the naming is actually a bit tough at the moment because we have coil a and then underline a underline one one and this is not cool so let's call this underline one one to underline two and also when it comes to underline one two let's call it underline three Okay. Same thing for the terminals. For the underline one one, we can call it underline two. And for the underline one underline two, just make it simple to underline three. Okay. So now we have our terminals and our coils. And uh, in a very weird manner, we have these two coils to look a bit different than the actual third one. So two of them are blue. So let me uh, go ahead and select all the coils at once. So I have all the coils and I'm going to go edit and select some some color, some blue color, and then press add that and OK. So there we go. We are all having the blue coils that we wanted to have. OK. So after this point, I'm going to have a duplicate of the coils that I have here and make on the other two um, edges of the E. So to do that, I'm going to select the coil A uh, and the terminals of that. And I'm going to do a duplicate along the line. And uh, I'm going to put the values of 
um, 0, 0, 0 for the x, y, and z. And uh, for the value of only y, we want to have to have 5 inch. Press enter and number is 3. So it should show me a very beautiful, nice three different colors here. And uh, now, uh, as you can see in this picture, you have to change the names to the following names. Uh, I'm going to do that uh, off recording and then come back when the names are all done. Thanks. Okay, so now the name is changed and as you can see uh, the terminology is as follows. So for the very first column we have um, coil A1 and then coil A2 and then co coil A3. So these three coils are going to sum up and make the very first one and then uh, we have for the middle coil B1, 2 and 3 and then coil C, 1, 2, and 3. Same uh, way we have the terminal A, terminal B, and terminal C's, uh, each three. So that will conclude the, the modeling of the problem. Um, the next station, we are going to go and uh, have the excitations applied to each terminals. And uh, after that, we will uh, find our boundary and uh, set up the simulation and uh, then we can have our results and discuss about those in the next two videos. That concludes our modeling and uh, problems as I said and leave uh, comments if you have any questions or if there was some parts that was so fast you couldn't see it let me know I can explain it uh, in the comment section. Thank you.